What Happens in the Woods er et true crime podcast. Vi diskuterer hændelser, der ofte er af voldelig karakter. Lytter skøn til rådes. What Happens in the Woods is a true crime podcast. We discuss events that are often violent in nature. Listeners discretion is advised. What is the truth? How do we recognize it? When a crime has been committed, authorities try their best to get to the bottom of the truth. But even their best efforts sometimes fall short. The truth has many different versions. Oftentimes a person's perspective can cause the versions to twist until the truth is no longer there. And let's face it, what criminal wants to get caught? Unfortunately, this is what authorities were up against while investigating our case this episode. The truth is lost somewhere between the accounts and the actual events from so long ago. Only the victims and the criminals will know for sure. And none of them have survived to tell it. This is True Crime Podcast, What Happens in the Woods, with your host, Justin Bryce. Let's get started. Hello there. Happy Friday. Welcome to a new episode and hopefully the beginning to a beautiful weekend wherever you are. I personally thought this day would never come this week. It was hard. It was a rough week. We hope you guys are doing well. Um, Normally, this would be where I ask Bryce how he's doing and uh, try to get him to talk at all. (laughs) But He's not here today, so instead I have a couple of stand-ins you guys may recognize. Uh, I have with us Mara and Olivia. What up, what up, what up? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you know, that's that means it's going to be crazy. Oh, yes. Chaotic yeah. energy. <laughs> <laughs> Chaos. Chaos magic. Yes. Where's that from? I don't know. Fuck. Where's it from? You, you Charmed. Me. Practical yeah. practical magic. I don't know. Um the vampire diaries. <laughs> <laughs> All the shows that you would watch. Barbie and the Twelve Dancing Princess. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie, that was some chaos magic. That was. Right? Okay. No. That's from uh WandaVision. She's oh well I haven't watched that. Yeah, I haven't watched it. She's chaos. Chaos, but I can't say it now. Chaos witch. Oh, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Skippy says no. Skippy does not agree. Sorry, man. Yeah. Skippy's having some. I don't know what Skippy's doing. Having a hard time, man. He's having a hard time coping with today. A hard day. It's been a week for him, too. All right. So (laughs) Price isn't here. So. This week and for most of this month, uh, Denmark has actually been the second in the lead for listenership. Wow. I, I'm curious to know how everybody is finding us. I I just want to know. So I'm going to ask you guys, I'm going to post something. I want everybody to kind of respond if they can. Um, follow us on Instagram at WHITW podcast and just comment how you found us and where you're listening from on that post. If you can't get on Instagram, just message us through the website, what happens in the woods.com. You can just send us a message and just let us know. Cause I, I'm just super curious how people across the country and across other continents are finding us. It's weird. Who are you people? Who are you people? Where's that from? SpongeBob. Thank you. You didn't know. No. Oh my God. It's been a long time. <sighs> I'm right. cultured, I'd swear. <laughs> yes, we we done good job. <laughs> um, we just want to say, though, thank you for everybody that listens wherever you are. And if you haven't already, please give us a rate and a review wherever you listen. Uh, we definitely would appreciate it. Do you guys have any updates? 
No. Since your dad's not here. Uh, I don't know. Recently, I found out The Strangers was a real event. Yeah. <laughs> I it's based didn't off know a that. true event. You didn't know that? No. It's an awesome movie. I like the movie. No. I didn't know. Oh. I, that, I mean, I don't like horror movies, which is, yeah, don't come at me because I know that's a very weird thing for me to say when I do this, but yeah yeah scary movies are not my favorite i'm not gonna lie that was a good one the second yeah. one though trash yeah i didn't really like the second one i didn't see the second one don't yeah i kind of <laughs> had to stop because that's honestly like that's one of my fears is that somebody's gonna break in the house and i'm not gonna be able to pr- like protect myself i think that's everyone's fear yes that's more my fear than say like getting carjacked or mugged or something like that Oh, no. You know what I mean? I'm scared of everything. My fear is ever vigilant. I mean, as you should be. It's called anxiety. <laughs> I, as you should not have. <laughs> but yes, it is a real thing. I mean, that's valid. Yeah. <laughs> valid. It's valid. I, yeah, that movie, that movie scared the shit out of me. I liked it. Yeah, I, like, I did. The Strangers and... The Conjuring movies are my favorite series. I told you guys when I sat down and got the tattoo that guy was watching Insidious. Yes. The tattoo artist. He was like, do you like this movie? And I was, I looked up and I was like, what is that? Cause I, I mean, I haven't watched that movie since it came out, what, 15 years ago or some shit. And I'm looking up at it and I was like, it's the same guy that that was in the Conjuring movies. Mm Mm-hmm. And it, I was like, wait, but that's not the Conjuring movies. And I said, is this Insidious? And he was like, yeah, this is my favorite movie. Ew. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. No, I barely could make it through any Insidious movie. I watched them. I watched all three of them. No, I couldn't. It's no, creepy. I'd rather watch the Conjuring and I'll just cry. Yeah. Well, that was creepy too. It didn't get know. creepy until the end. I'm sorry. The first second that those kids were walking around that house clapping. Them kids. <laughs> that that first part first of clap. it. clap. Yeah, no. Mom loves when we do that. I, you'll get stabbed in my house if you do that. <laughs> I don't play around with that nonsense. Yeah, that's it's not cool. Y'all just love to fuck with me. It's fine. <laughs> no, never that. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um... Okay, we're off topic. Any is that your update? You didn't know that? Yes, that is my update for the world. Okay. Okay. And Mara? Uh, I'm still as awesome as ever. So All right. Um, <laughs> my drop podcast is yeah. done. Let's go. The That's end. it. That's it. We're done. All right. Everybody have a good day. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, we're ready? Yes. As ready as I will ever be. This week, I have quite the story for you. It does cover some sensitive subjects, so I want to reiterate, as always, please listen responsibly. Uh, We will be discussing things such as children being murdered and molestation, so it's heavy, heavy topics. Uh, For this episode, we will be looking at two female criminals that were convicted of murdering two children one of whom set the record of being the first woman to be sentenced to death in the state of Oregon. And this is an old timey one. This is from the sixties. Damn. So, you know, I love me some old timey crimes. Um, I'm sure probably though, a lot of you guys have not heard of this particular woman, unless you live in Oregon and you're into true crime. I, I had never heard of her or the woman who was convicted with her, who was her lover. I had not heard of these women until I was digging into like old newspaper sites. And these were like archived papers that were scanned and available online. So I, you know, this is what I do on my free time now is go through newspapers online and read them. It's sad. This episode, we are taking a look at Jean Ants, June Freeman, and Gertrude May Nunez Jackson, who were accused and sentenced for the brutal murders of Jackson's two children. On May 12th, 1961, the bodies of two young children were found by a visitor to the Ogden Gorge, uh, it's a state park near Redmond, Oregon. 
Walter Mayer was, uh, he's a state por- parks employee. He was visiting from Bend, Oregon. He was showing like people around the park and it, he was showing out like views and vistas through binoculars. And they came across a site that um, created quite a shock for them. They weren't quite sure what they had seen, but it did look like at least a body. So they called the state police and there was like a four hour retrieval of these children's bodies. It was not easy. There's like the, the ravine has like a 360 foot drop. What? Yeah. So they had to like navigate down this and it took over like half of a day just to do it. Um, Some of the state parks employees were like injured (laughs) trying to, to do this, to bring up the bodies. But in the end, they did. So it actually turned out to be two bodies. And for days, the identities of these little children went unknown. There were no reports in the area of any missing children. Nobody had come forward with any info. And I read that the local authorities were pretty sure that they just they would never solve these mysteries. Like it just nobody was coming forward. Nobody was saying they missed their, their you know, their children were missing. So they were like, there's no telling That um, it's a state park. So that area is pretty heavily like driven through and, um, you know, people stop there all all the time just coming and going. So they were pretty much thinking that somebody had passed through, you know, the bodies went over the side of the ravine. They went on their way and they were never going to see anybody again to link these children to. Well, imagine their surprise when a local man named Clyde Whitcraft comes forward and he states he thinks that those kids could be connected to his stepdaughter. Turns out his stepdaughter, 19-year-old Jeanance Freeman and her girlfriend, Gertrude Jackson, had passed through this place uh, only just a like, couple days before on May 11th. I had a really hard time, side note, finding Gertrude's age, like her true age, the papers around the time say anywhere from 25, 33, and even 40. What? She, nobody seemed to know. And it was like in every article, it was different. 33 was the most listed, but they were all from like a news source. So it wasn't like people couldn't have gotten this information. They should have had accurate information, but it was very like all over the place. But like. She's 19, dating this older woman in um, the 60s? I'm assuming she was like 33. In the 60s, though. Yeah, it was 1961. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. According to this guy, Jackson's children, um, Lawrence and Martha, they were just age six and four, were not with them when they when they had stopped by. Whitcraft or Red, as he went by, claimed that the women told him that the children were taken into foster care and were no longer living with Gertrude. What? That's what they claimed. Wait, so these were Gertrude's kids? Yes. Okay. And they from her common law husband. Okay. And yes. so they're like runaway couple. They're they're a runaway couple. No. No, they were just, um, they were on a trip. They were leaving Eugene, Oregon to go down to the Bay Area in California. They were not running away. Mm-mm. Yeah. Um, they had already been living together in, in Eugene. Oh. Yeah, the common law husband um, that the kids were, their biological father, was, uh, he, he just abandoned them. I, I could not find any information. There was like one little sentence in all of my research that was just like he had left the home before um, Jean Ants moved in. Okay. That's rude. Yeah. So with all of that information, the local sheriff kind of needed a little bit more proof. So he had photos sent to the authorities in Eugene of the children of the bodies to see if any family members or neighbors could confirm that these were in fact the Jackson children. Confirmation did come from Jean Ance's half sister Phyllis, as well as a neighbor that they, this was indeed Larry and Martha. So on May 16th, the couple would be spotted and arrested in Oakland, California 
after an APV was uh, sent out to multiple states. Also held in question was a hitchhiker named Letha June Little, who, as far as I can make out at this point in the research, and this one takes some turns. So as far as I can make out at this point, um, Jeanance referred to Little as her wife. What? <laughs> right. In other accounts, she was just a hitchhiker that the two women picked up on a drive, like on the drive down. But she also was from Eugene, Oregon. What? What kind of like right. polyamorous, like lesbian love is going on here? I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot going I mean, on. Go off. Yes. Like, live your best life, but also don't murder people. Well, that's the thing. Don't murder the children. Okay. Yeah. Do what you got to do, but don't don't kill the kids. So, yeah, she I, I couldn't figure out at this point in my research where she fit in. And get, keep in mind, this is only the first like the first version of the story. Oh. This is yeah. So keep that in mind. Um, so there was a mention that she was held as a witness and extradited with them to Oregon without bond. In one article article that I read, I don't know why would they would hold a witness without bond. Yeah, and and make her like extradite her along with them back to Oregon. That seemed a little weird to me. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a witness to me. Right. That sounds like an accomplice <laughs> yeah. who's going to be charged. Yeah. I'm I'm it's a little iffy on that. So after their arrests are made, Gertrude confesses right away to the murders. Like within 4 hours of being in custody, she confesses. And she says it was a joint effort. She admits that the two were in a relationship. She's claiming that she persuaded, she was persuaded by Jean Ance's advances towards her, that it all came from Jean Ance. It was like, she was just, she kept making these moves to her, you know, on her towards her and she just kind of fell in line with it. And, um, she went along with whatever Jean Ance said, basically is what she's claiming. She states that Jean Ance killed her son and that Gertrude, she killed her daughter and they threw them over the guard railing into the ravine. Yeah. Jean Ance maintained her innocence from the start and throughout all of the court proceedings saying that she did not have a part in any of it at all. How would you not? Okay. Right. She, she claims that it was all Gertrude. Totally. But you were probably there to watch. Um, I mean, she was there. She said she was there. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, right. You're kind of guilty too. Right. Even even if that's the accurate version of the story. Yeah. Which, like I said, keep in mind, this is the first version. Yes. So from here, this is where it gets a little wild. And the, the there's you just can't find the truth. Like the truth is not there. The oh, truth is Lord. skewed. So after the rest in California, legal counsel was given. Um, and Jean Ance was told not to agree to the extradition out of the state. It's unsure if the same advice was given to Gertrude. However, she had already given her version of the events and like a confession. Yeah. So she may have just waived that extradition by doing that. Okay. Right. But the lawyer in California told Jean Ants, do not like, don't go along with it. You need to fight it. And she didn't listen. So she didn't take that advice and the women were both extradited to um, Madras, Oregon, along with Letha, who was the wife or a hitchhiker, (laughs) depending (laughs) upon how you go about looking at this. I mean, I'd be pretty mad if I got downgraded hitchhiker and I was a wife. Well, you couldn't be a wife, though. That that was not legal. (laughs) Prison wife. (laughs) Right. So... On May 22nd, the women asked for a postponement so that they could find legal counsel while they were in Oregon. Both were being held without bail on charges of first degree murder, as you would expect. Uh, Jean Ance for the murder of Larry and Gertrude for the murder of Martha. And at the time, a charge of first degree murder could result in the death penalty. They still had the death penalty by gas chamber in Oregon at that time. Oh, damn. Yeah. Um, before the trials were set to begin, Gertrude confessed, like fully confessed, and she did not go to a trial. 
So she turned state's evidence on Janance and like it was an attempt to lessen her sentence because she knew that if she was convicted and good chances were that she was going to be, she would get the death penalty. Yeah. So in return, she was sentenced, no trial. She was given life in prison with the possibility of parole. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I'll get to that in a second. In her account um, of how things went down, uh, like her confession, both children were beaten and mutilated. Their genitals were mutilated. For what? With a tire iron. In. But, uh, right. For what? They were oh hit God. over the head, choked, strangled, mutilated, and then both of them thrown over into the ravine. For what reason, though? Right. Well, I'm getting to that. Her only part in all of it physically was that she threw Martha over the ravine after all of that happened. What in the... How do you even throw your own... Okay. No, I, I exactly. How do you? How do you just throw your own kid over a guardrail? You're like, all right, right. bye. Right. Have fun, sweetie. <laughs> Stop. I, okay. Were they already dead then? So he was, but apparently she was not. Oh my God. What yeah. the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's hor- It's horrible. That's why I had to kind of reiterate that. It's definitely disturbing. Definitely um, disturbing. Yeah. So, like I said, she said she only physically took part in that by throwing her daughter over. Only. Only. That's her only thing that she did. Mm-hmm. Right. On September 5th, 1961, Jean Ance's trial begins. And on the 13th, Gertrude took the stand as a witness. Her accounts of the murders placed most of the blame on Jean Ance. Again, it's confirmed that the two women were having a relationship. Keep in mind, um, in this time period, any person who was homosexual or lived an alternative lifestyle in any way could be at risk of being denied um, employment, denied housing, denied health care, even, you know, imprisoned or fined. So people who were labeled, quote unquote, queer were considered mentally ill and sexual deviants. They had no place in society at that time. So I found it kind of interesting that they admitted to that. I mean, I guess, but then like what, what's going to (laughs) happen? Well, I mean, you're on trial for murder. So I guess that's the, (laughs) that's the least of your worries. Um, But Jean Ants would be heavily criticized and degraded by the media and the law enforcement because of how she portrayed herself she preferred jeans, men's shirts, grooming herself to appear as a, a boy, basically, as a man. Okay. That's what she preferred to look like. That was her comfort level. Mm-hmm. Gertrude, however, presented herself as a heterosexual woman would, quote unquote, lo- normally look mm-hmm. during that time. She wore dresses. She had her hair done. She, you know, manicures. Yeah. Uh, kept her appearance to a certain norm during that time. I'm not saying either is right. I'm just saying that's what... Is reported. So Gertrude worked as a laundry woman, and I read an account that she was not making very much money where they lived in Eugene. So she had previously in the Bay Area been making more money. So it's possible that they were kind of going on this trip to see if like a move was possible. So they moved back down to the Bay Area so she could get a better job. Apparently, there was discussions that the kids were in the way, and they're mentioned casually during her testimony like what what could they do to rid themselves of these kids she also claimed that when Janance wanted to be intimate with Gertrude she was frustrated because the kids would often interrupt and need something kids do that that's they're young they're six and four years old you're not just going to shut the door and go do what you want like that's just the way they are (laughs) sorry So this is basically the only explanation at this point of why the children were murdered that I can find. That's because she couldn't have sex. Gertrude is saying because she couldn't have sex when she wanted, basically. It was a hardship. So, yeah, basically, that's the only thing that I could find 
um, at this point that explains any of why that happened at all. Gertrude claims that she loved her children and that she had had a good relationship with the, her common law husband, their father, but I, I can find nothing on him. I don't even, I, I couldn't even find his name. And um, once he left that she could no longer afford to take care of them and feed them. So I also read that she was previously divorced and she had an older son. Scandalous. Right. <laughs> so she had had an older son in that relationship. I have no idea where he was or where the father was. That I'm assuming that he lived with his father. They got as far away as possible from the crazy bitch. I mean, yeah. So in her account, when the couple reached the bridge that, um, went over the crooked river at the Ogden state park, they pulled over. Gertrude was told by Janance to quote, get lost. Uh, oh, right. She claims that she had gone Mama. for a walk. She just did. She just, she, she didn't ask any questions. She just got out of the car and went for a walk. Oh, sounds about right. Yeah. And when she came back, uh, Larry had been beaten and his genitals mutilated with a tire iron. He'd also been choked and strangled. His body was sitting in the front seat of the car. And as she's walking up, Jean Ants was undressing him and then took his body over to the railing and threw him over. She says Jean Ants then told Gertrude to undress Martha, who was in a similar state in the back seat, throw her body in the same way she had just witnessed with the brother. From her account, she thought Martha was still alive at that point. After the deed was done, the two women then went for breakfast at Jean Ance's stepfather's, who lived just a short drive away from where they were at the state park. What in the fuck? Right. Just went on about their business. They tossed the kids clothes out of the car while they were on the highway, which was later recovered. So they just tried to get rid of every like any evidence of them in the car. Yeah. But but Gertrude is not questioning any of this. She's just Apparently like, not. oh, I took a walk because she told me to get lost. And then right. I came back and my kids were just dead, dead, right on the brink of death. And, and then she you know, said to toss my child over the guardrail. Right. So I did. Right. No questions asked. Duh. No. What in the hell? Right. So they go to her stepdad's. So that's uh, Red. Craft is his name. They um, spent a good part of the day there. They were fishing in the river. Oh. Um, they were enduring nature. And I'm happy then, for them. Right. They <laughs> found their joy. A good day. They found their peace <laughs> after they committed atrocious crimes. Um, and then from there, they continued on to California. Somewhere along the way, Letha Little was picked up. I, I just still don't know how she fits into any of this at this point. <laughs> When they got to Oakland, they sold their car, they got a, an apartment, and they were on their way to a new life. And that was that. And then they got arrested. <laughs> yeah. Um, another witness for the prosecution was a doctor. I'm assuming he was some sort of psychiatrist or a psychologist. They don't say specifically. Um, but this doctor went on to give commentary on the two women's lives up until this point. And it is very frustrating to read through this account because the doctor goes on to basically sing Gertrude's praises. She was a great employee. She was a, a decent mother. She was hardworking. She never had stepped out of line. And outside of her, you know, common law marriage, she'd never committed any crimes. And she, wasn't she just a great citizen? Amazing. Right. She was. But then he goes on to claim that Janance is a sociopath. And um, yeah, he's jealous. He's jealous. So when Janance takes the stand the following day and she gives her account of what happened, she claims that Gertrude was responsible for all of it. Oh, my God. Yeah. When asked why she didn't do anything to stop it, she simply answered that she was scared. She didn't know what to do. But she adamantly denied doing anything to harm the children. She says that she liked the children and that they were not a bother to her. And she was actually, when she met Gertrude, she was actually uh, like came in to babysit them. 
Mm. and kind of became like a caregiver for them while Gertrude was at work. Which one of them was mad that they couldn't have sex? I In supposedly. that scenario, I I don't know. Maybe Gertrude. Well, supposedly the first time it was Jeanette's, right? Right. Mm. Right. Except now she's a babysitter. Now she's a saint. Well, no, she's a babysitter. So why would she get all bothered when they're coming in asking for stuff? Right. They're trying to like have the sexy time. I mean, they did eventually get into a relationship, but Janance did not like at any point say that the children were like a a hardship to have or to to be around. I mean, she's not going to say that. (laughs) No, but I, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. And I, I think, however, there, there really wouldn't have been anything that she could have said to change the outcome of her conviction simply because how she was being portrayed. Yeah. You know, they, they absolutely hated on her. She was, she was described in like very derogatory comments. It doesn't surprise me. No. So the very next day she's found guilty of first degree murder. And just four days later, she was sentenced to death by way of gas chamber. Jeez. But this is not where our story ends. Uh, Not by any means. So when we come back from break, I will tell you the rest of this very crazy and sordid story. Before the break, we talked about the trial and convictions of Gertrude Jackson and Janance Freeman. As mentioned, Gertrude uh, agreed to plead guilty and she testified against Janance in exchange for a lesser sentence she ended up uh, being given life in prison, but she only served seven years of that. And then she was paroled. What? That was what? it. Yeah. Um, so she was released in 1968. After that, she all the drops off the face of the earth. I can't find even like a date of her death. I, I can't find any mention of her outside of she moved to Portland after she was released and changed her name. So um, that's that's just the end of that. That's like where she just stops. Um, Freeman claims to never have spoken to her again. Mm. Um, yeah, they never saw each other in prison. They were in different prisons. Of course, Janance was on death row for the first two years. And so she wouldn't have had any any interaction with Gertrude at all anyways. But yeah, they never saw each other again. Um, As I said, Janance made history as the first woman who was sentenced in the state of Oregon to death. She held that distinction until 2011. So was that 50 years? Jeez. Yeah. Um, That was until Angela uh, McNulty was placed on death row in 2011. So, of course, there were appeals. They were all succinctly denied And from reading the news articles from that time, there was just no sympathy for her simply because of the fact that she was a lesbian and she did not try to hide it in any way. So the courts didn't care. Judges didn't want to hear it. They denied every appeal and the public really was not on her side at all. I mean, that kind of sucks. I mean, it kind of it does. And I'm not saying that she didn't rightly belong on death row. Yeah. I I think no matter which version you're looking at, there's some responsibility between both of the women. Obviously, yes. they were both there. They both admitted to being there. Doesn't matter if one of them did it and the other one was there. You were there. You were there and you didn't stop it. And then you didn't go to authorities afterwards. Yeah. But part of your trial, your, like your trial should not be biased. And that's well, completely biased. It shouldn't be based on your identity, your sexual orientation. Yeah. Unless it was a sexually motivated crime. So I just kind of wonder, had that not been a factor, how that would have played out? I, yeah, I don't think that she would have gotten the death penalty. Yeah. I, I do. I do think that that had something to do with it. But yeah, not to say that she deserves to just to not be in jail. Yeah. Right, no, but she like gas chamber. It's a little excessive there. For if if you're looking at it, if they had definitive proof that it was solely her, 
Yeah. That she had been the only person responsible. Yeah. And that Gertrude had no part in it whatsoever. If they could definitively tie her to that crime with hard evidence, maybe death row was, it, it would have been more feasible to say that that was an accurate conviction. Yeah. But they don't have that. Yeah. They didn't have that. And, and because simply f- because of the fact that Gertrude turned state's evidence against her, that is the only reason she got a lesser sentence. And I know how that works. I mean, that's how that works. You narc on your friend and you get less jail time yep. because they've got two convictions and that's all anybody's worried about. But it doesn't, that doesn't mean the, 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 you know, like the seven years that she served and then got parole, those were her children. Yeah, like those were her cool. own children. Yeah. And she admitted to being there. She admitted to killing what, you know, one of them. Yeah. Not, not doing anything to stop it and not doing anything to stop anything, you know, cause what she, by her account, she walked up and both of the children were still there. Yeah. If Larry was already deceased at that point, she had a chance to you save could have the stopped other one. you could have stopped something, yeah, yeah, both bodies did not need to go over the ravine, no. that's for sure, so yeah it's it's just it's a little frustrating, so she maintained you know she didn't conform to the look of a quote unquote normal young woman back then, so i I definitely think that that also played into you know, how the media portrayed her. Yeah. And, and that, you know, when the media leans you one way, there are some people who are like, yeah, I don't know. It could go either way. There are a lot of people who just, Oh, the media came out in the newspaper and look at her picture and Oh my God. And they're going to go along with whatever is in that print. Mm -hmm. That's just it. So she actually was able to uh, get a stay of execution five times. Wow. Yeah. Um, During this time, there was a big debate in the state on whether they shouldn't even have a death penalty. Yeah. Oregon is one of those ones. They were kind of going back and forth about it. It wasn't to be voted on until 1964. So she had the final stay of execution on December 6, 1962. She did have a scheduled execution date of January 29th in 1963. It did not happen. So finally, in 1964, it was voted on and decided that the death penalty was abolished. So Janance was then sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole. Ten years after that, it's 1974, and Janance sends a basically an, a letter to the Oregonian newspaper while serving her sentence. She's in Alderson, West Virginia. It, she changes her story. Oh. So this is her third and final version. In this weird turn of events, and I mean, really, who knows who knows wh- who, what the truth is? These two women know what the truth is or some variation of it. But nobody else outside of that, outside of the children, who, who are they going to tell? Yeah. Nobody knows. So she claims that Janance lost her temper. She tried to kill Gertrude, not the kids. Okay. Right. So quoting from the article in her own words, I have a few things to say that I've kept to myself for too many years. The crime that I committed was indeed horrible. Any crime of murder is, but what made mine so bad was that the fact that it was a small boy that I killed. Would it interest anyone to know that I meant to kill his mother? Only she pushed him in the way, and he caught the blow that I meant for her. Can you understand how I did panic? So this letter goes on to address many things. She questions what kind of mother pushes her kid in the way to save themselves, and then she decides to kill her other child as well. She also goes on to say that she lied to cover it up because she didn't know what to do. She addresses how the public views her as a lesbian and explains that years of sexual abuse caused her to prefer to be intimate with women. 
She knew that the public opinion of her and the way the media portrayed her sexual orientation probably greatly contributed to the reason she was sentenced to die. So as I had mentioned earlier, part of what uh, Janance is referring to is that she had a pretty rough start in life. I couldn't find, I mean, it's, it's an old crime and, you know, it's not as sensationalized as it is now. Like everybody's life story is, is everywhere. You can find it. Yeah. But at this time, you know, people were still very big on uh, keeping things private unless it was just a- absolutely sensational news. So the part of the crime and their trial and all of that, that was sensational. So that was talked about what had happened before that, how they met any of their lives previously didn't matter. It, it wasn't recorded. So she kind of goes into this information. So at the age of just four years old, she began being molested by, of all people, her stepfather, the very same one that the women visited after the children were murdered. Hmm. Yeah. Apparently he came home drunk um, on that first time, decided that that's what he felt like doing and he did it and nobody stopped him. Uh, Nobody stepped in and this continued until she was a teen. And she reported this to a school counselor at the age of 12. She did get some help. They wouldn't take her from the home because they just didn't do that in those days. But she was given access to mental health care. And it helped her. Um, She was having a hard time in school. Her grades were dropping. She was having like outbursts. She was she was having a hard time. Um, so having somebody that she could talk to and um, access to to what little they had in the way of mental health care at that time, it helped her. It did, you know, when she had access to it, it was it was a good thing. It just was infrequent. So she would get it and then she wouldn't have access to it for a long time. So when she was uh Sometime in high school, she was actually sent to like a reformatory school and that didn't go well. Does it ever? No. So she ended up from what I can from again, not very clear, but from what I can figure out, she ended up just like leaving and running away from that. At some point, she probably would have gotten, you know, taken back, but then she became an adult. So Mm. Um, during that time, it's also noted, and I cannot confirm that this is accurate, but according to her, her mother would have men over to the house and she would engage in sex with them in front of Janance. Oh, yes. So I mean, you can imagine all of this led to Janance preferring not to have physical contact with a man. She, in her own words, she couldn't imagine being intimate with a man and she had no attraction like physical or otherwise to men. And I, I could see in this case, that's perfectly reasonable. That's a perfectly reasonable response to like her trauma of the event that happened at a young age. I, I do want to stress though, that I don't believe that like sexual trauma causes women to become lesbians or, or any other sexual orientation. That is not what I'm saying at all. I, of course, would I won't presume to speak for any member of the LBGTQ community, but your your sexual orientation is not like a sum of your trauma. Yeah, I I just can see in this instance, she having been four years old and that's your first sexual experience. I can't imagine that you would want to go on to have an experience with a man like yeah. that at any age. And that's what she and that's says, what she did, right? Like- so it definitely had a like a long lasting effect on Janance, but I I don't presume to say that that's why she associated as a lesbian. Yeah. I'm just saying that this is, you know, in in her own defense, this is she's she says in that letter, look at what made me be who I am. Yeah. Like, look at where this started and how how can I be blamed for that? But then you guys want to crucify me in the media. So it's just is unfortunate, but you know, that didn't, that doesn't get looked on with sympathy during her trial at all. Like there's no sympathy for that. So 
I wanted to further read a quote from that doctor who testified at her trial. Um, His name was Dr. I think it's Haugen. And he said, quote, I feel she was a very severe sociopath, a ruthless individual whose conscience was practically nil. A person who, as much as possible, would do whatever pleased her, regardless of the consequences to herself or other people. And I had to wonder, like, was he aware of her upbringing and made such bold statements about her character and then go on to claim that Gertrude Jackson was, quote, just an innocent party to all that Janance had done. He even went so far to say, um, quote, she appeared to have taken fairly good care of her children. How? Uh, But then she allowed them to be hurt and murdered. But okay. What doesn't make sense to me is like in the letter how she was like, she put the child in front of me and I, the kid took the blow. Yeah. Yeah. What were you aiming at? Yeah. Like if you were to hit somebody, you go for the head. Well, yeah, but they were both um, short, like women who were shorter. They were both very like short and petite women. But it's like a four year old kid, right? He's six. Yeah, he's six. six. So he wouldn't be like that tall. (laughs) Like, what were you aiming for here? What were you doing? No, I mean, unless you were trying know. to aim for, like, her legs to, like, kick her, like, take her down. Or her stomach. Just yeah. Like, well, yeah. I mean, she could have been aiming high, and then as it was coming down, she hit him instead. I don't know. Either way, that just sounds sketch to me. Yeah. I mean, it kind of does. Yeah. Like, yeah. if I were to just throw something at someone, I would aim for the head. Right. Not anywhere else. If you're trying to murder them. I don't know. Maybe she was going like across the face or something. I don't know. Like maybe she wasn't coming from like a a top to bottom like position. She was going from like a a side to side. You know what I mean? Like her her arm was going to be going side sideways. (laughs) Basketball. Basketball. Yeah. Basketball with a bat. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Apparently that's how you play basketball, guys. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Um, my take on things is that Gertrude kind of used Janance to take the blame, basically. Yeah. 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 I mean, she portrayed herself as this, like, demure, helpless woman who was... Who just went along. Right. She was being dominated, yeah. basically, is what she said in the relationship. And, and they quoted, the, like, the doctor even said, in a relationship such as this with lesbians, there always has to be a dominant person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, there's... Uh, there doesn't all need sorts to be of a manner. dominant person. There doesn't need to be. And there's all sorts of manner of relationships where there are dominant people. Like it's not just between a woman and a woman. It could be yeah. between a man and a man, a man and a woman. It could be between an, any any sort of variance of sexual orientation. There could be a dominant person. Even in, in, in a polyamorous relationship, there might be a dominant person. That has nothing to do with her being women, you know, them being women. Like it's, I don't know. He tried to say it was always a trait of lesbians. Uh, okay. okay. Right. Because uh-huh. we're bomb ass bitches. <laughs> it just, it, like the. <laughs> I just, I hate, I don't like that narrative. I don't like no. it at all. No, I, I didn't like it at all. It's also, if you further but that thinking. The 60s. Well, it's the 60s. Not that that's an excuse, but. No, it's the, it's the reason. Yeah. 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 And and it's almost like if you take that a step further and you're talking about just a heterosexual relationship that there had to be a dominant person. And who's that going to be? In the 60s, the that's the man. So but- it's like it's that line of thinking where there has to be somebody in control and in charge. There just doesn't have to be. And, and they're really that's not like, a relationship. Maybe, yeah, that's not a relationship or at least yeah. a healthy one. Like, yeah. you at least need someone who can, I don't want to say take control, but, like, can make a decision well, that'll help both parties, not just one. Well, I th- I think it's important to have a supportive relationship that, you know, where the other person supports you in your weakness. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, nobody needs to necessarily be in control all the time, but there are going to be certain situations where somebody takes you know, lead in a situation. Yeah. Yeah. It's give and take. Right. 
but it should be supportive to where the other person needs that help because they don't have that confidence or, you know, their decision making might not come as fast or it just, it doesn't have to be a, I'm in charge and I'm in control and this is what I say. And that's really what they made this out to be was that Janance was in control simply because she chose to, to dress as she did and look and portray herself as she did. She obviously had to be in control. Like that just bothers That makes no sense. It bothers me just because like these are Gertrude's kids. Right. It's not Janance's kids. Right. And I don't know. It's just the whole thing bothers me. No, because it, I feel it really like does. like the narrative, like you said, is really on Gertrude's side. Yes. And I we're we're not gonna get the full story. No. 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 So Janance was eventually paroled. She served twenty two years of her sentence. She was released in nineteen eighty three. Jeez. And it was very short-lived freedom. She was right back in jail after violating her parole by living in a home where tr- children were present Ugh. and also being in possession of a knife. Oh. Right. Okay. So she was not allowed to have any weapons and she could not be living in a home where there were children. That was conditions of her parole on top of just the normal conditions of don't commit a crime and, you know, yeah. r- report to your parole officer and, and all of that. So, She's back in jail. She served 19 months. She was released again in 1985. And this time she did well for a while. Um, There was an article published in the Statesman Journal in August of that year, 1985. Janance sheds even more light on what happened with Gertrude and her children. So this is version (laughs) (laughs) 3.5. Ah, shit. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is actually probably the closest, though to the truth that we're going to get um, without getting a final version from Gertrude. Cause like I said, she just, she doesn't exist anymore at this point. And she probably she, changed her name. She changed her name and she outfit was, yeah. and hair and everything. Yeah. So I do think this is as close as it's going to get to, to the final, <laughs> the final version. Um, but I, I, this still leaves a lot up for speculation. So she describes her troubled past and how eventually when she met Gertrude, she was drinking a lot and using pills heavily. And because of how she preferred to dress in a more manly way, Gertrude told the kids that she was a man. And that frustrated her because she was not a man. She didn't want to be a man. She was a woman who was comfortable looking a certain way. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Gertrude just couldn't accept that or... She told Janance that it would confuse the kids. So they were just going to say that she was a man. Okay. Yeah. Gertrude, um, she ended up having, uh, apparently having a pill and alcohol addiction as well. So she describes this trip that they took. She claims that they had been fighting for, quote, days on end. And they were drunk and high off of pills. They ended, ended up driving without stopping and sleeping that night. And she states that she was actually going to be leaving Gertrude for her former lover, lover for her former lover, Letha. So there was a previous relationship and the other woman, I don't know still how she got with them <laughs> in Oakland. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, that's still, like I said, there's still some speculation here. Maybe all of them were friends. Mm, I, but they don't say that she started the trip with them. So where'd she come from? Well, maybe she lived in Oakland and then like. She lived in Eugene with like in the same area as them. But Gertrude was like, I'm going to leave this bitch. Got to have my side hoe close and ready. No, oh, it was no. Janance. Janance. Sorry. Janance. Too many yeah. G's. Not Sorry. my problem. Well, it's a J. <laughs> Janance is a J. It's Jean Ants. All right. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, she just, she's there. I don't know. She's not. And then she's, she's there. She wasn't there when the children were killed and then she's there. So, uh, so apparently though, Janance was going to be leaving Gertrude and this was just 
pissing her off and she wouldn't shut up about it. So Jeanette's decided that she couldn't handle any more of it. And the way to shut her up was to take her out to kill her. Oh, right. So the problem was that like, like was said, she was just about to beat Gertrude with the tire iron and Larry woke up, came out of the car and was in the direct line of the hit in a panic. She said she assumed that he was dead and that, you know, then they, we all know how that story went and what they did and how they disposed of the bodies. She then claims she went to her stepfather's alone. I don't know how she got there. If she took the car or if Gertrude, she left Gertrude the car and she walked. Um, But the next day, Gertrude showed up without her daughter, claiming, quote, that they loved each other so much. I knew they'd want to be together when Janance asked where Martha was. The fuck? Right. And and then from there, they just went to California. Uh. Right. Yeah, this is a whole it's bunch still, of... It. It's still just some bullshit. Yeah. Um, there was no mention of, again, how, where, who had the car, how got, how they got where. Um, no mention of how Letha came into the picture or why anybody consented to go on this trip again, like to resume <laughs> this trip. Like... There was all, they was all on drugs. So. Nothing about this story makes sense. No. So after being released, she decides to change her name. So this is in 1985. She changed her name to Wilma Lynn Rule. No explanation is given other than like possibly to gain some anonymity and in her life and try to move on. Um, Janance or William, as she was then known, unfortunately, was then arrested again in 2002. This time for threatening two people again in possession of a knife. (laughs) And there isn't. She just wants a knife, goddammit. She just wants the knife. And there isn't much information I could find uh, that states who the people were or what their relationship was to to her. I read a comment in a thread that she was in a relationship with one of the people, and that she was upset because that person was engaging in sex for pay with the other person. Oh, again, can't verify that. That was just a comment in a in a like line of commenting. <laughs> under an article i i can say though that that would probably piss me off if i was in a relationship with somebody and then they were having you know sex for pay with somebody else i might get mad unless we agreed to that but uh, i mean <laughs> yeah. maybe i guess i mean I, if you've talked about it before <laughs> but I don't it know. seems that you know the knife came out because that was not talked about so, I would yeah. assume that that was kind of maybe a surprise. And or she maybe was, she just didn't remember. Was she on drugs still? No, she got oh, okay. clean in, in jail. Yeah. She, I was going to say, maybe she didn't remember the conversation. I was like, bitch. Maybe she was asleep when the conversation happened. <laughs> maybe. Maybe the conversation you know? did not happen. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm assuming the conversation did not happen because I, I find that when you're that surprised about something and it would anger you that way, your response (laughs) is anger. And you pull a knife and you pull a knife. Don't pull knives. I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not backing that. (laughs) I don't condone that. Yeah. We're not condoning that behavior. Um, so she, she was sentenced to a total of four years for felony charges of two counts of unlawful use of a dangerous weapon and a single count of coercion. Apparently she had them by knife point and she said, take me to the store. (laughs) So that was coercion. Maybe she would like to get to a phone or something. I don't know. (laughs) Take me to the store. Take me to the store. So they, they (laughs) do that next time I need to go to the store. Pull a knife on somebody. Pull a knife on somebody. Take me to the store. Take me. Well, to the store. Be prepared to be arrested on felony counts of no. coercion and um, no one will know. Useful of a uh, unlawful use of a dangerous weapon. Useful use. Useful use. <laughs> <laughs> I the words are not my friend today, you guys. I can't. Uh. So unfortunately, um, Janance would never again be a free woman. On December 19th, 2003, she passed away from lung cancer while serving her sentence in Clackamas County Prison. Yeah, yeah it, her life was rough. Her life was definitely rough. 
If only she would just put the damn knife down. I know, right? Just don't have knives. You could have enjoyed your years. No, but she needed to get to the damn store. Well, she needed to use a phone after... I don't know. Anger. Maybe she maybe she needed her low blood sugar was getting <laughs> low. I don't know. I don't want to make light of it. It's it is serious, but it is very unfortunate cuz she she, she had just, a trouble past. She had a very hard time. Yeah, she had yeah. a trouble past and like her, her later life was not the best either and then dying of lung cancer in a prison. Right. I mean, that's just it's desolate. It's yeah. it's it's it's, it's really sad. So yeah, that's that's all I got. It was a lot. That's all you got. That's all that's I got. It? That's all it. you got. That's it this week. That's it this episode. My yeah, God, I don't yeah. know how to feel about any of that because I feel like I will never get the the true answers here. No, I'm just so confused. Like obviously the children were murdered. They were thrown off a railing in a ravine. Right. And somebody killed them. One of these, I, both of them. Killed I just, them. I think both of them killed yeah. them. I think, like I said, that was probably the closest to the truth was they were high and yeah. they were drunk and they were, um, I, Fighting I don't know how that something. enters the conversation. Um, and then I think Gertrude was like, well, I got to get myself out of this shit. Like, I'm not going down for this. So it's all her fault. Yeah, yeah, so Janance was the fall woman. Yeah. It was it was a little too perfect for Gertrude. Yeah. Especially to have that doctor dude be like, Gertrude, saint. Yeah, that's some Janance. bullshit. It, no. is, it really is. And it was just on the way that she looked and the way that she presented herself. And just because she had never had any, you know, run in with the law before. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're a good person. Plenty of, of bad people do shitty things and are never caught. Yeah. And it does not mean you're a good person. Yeah, you can be a horrible person and have no morals and have no remorse for your actions and not do anything, quote unquote, like unlawful. Yeah. Yeah. And you just be a shitty person. And I think she was just a shitty person. Yeah, because those were her kids and then to blame right. it on somebody else. Right. And I, I mean, you look at her pictures and there's no, like right, when they were being arrested, they're in the, she's in the back of a car and a photo, photographer got right up to the window of the car and took a photo. And you clearly, I mean, she's like, her face is in the frame completely. I don't see remorse. And I don't, I don't see any despair of, I just lost my children and I, you know, or I made a bad choice or like just n nothing. There's nothing there that, that tells me she was sorry about any of it at all. Like you look at Maybe her picture. Maybe she and was, was crazy. Just, I mean, at that point, they still could have been high off of whatever they were taking. Yeah. Honestly, when they were arrested, they probably had no idea what was going on. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I, although she came, I mean, she confessed pretty quickly. It said within four hours she had, had said, this is what happened. So she had enough presence of mind to blame it on somebody else. Yeah. So she wasn't that fucked up. Mm. Huh. I, but God only knows. I mean, they've had that whole drive. She could have been thinking, how am I going to get myself out of this, uh, that whole entire way? Yeah. You know, all the way to Oakland. Right, that's, that's a long ass drive. That's like I, I mean, from mid Oregon. What is that? It, about seven, eight hours. Yeah, a little yeah. something. Nine, maybe at the most, but it's cutting it a little. I mean, back then, maybe nine, just because of of you know, like I don't I five. I don't think was a thing. Maybe maybe was a thing then. Um, but it, you know, speed limits being what they were and what cars could do. I don't know that they were going like how I drive. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I don't, maybe, maybe about eight, nine hours. I don't know. She could have been spending that whole time thinking, how am I, how can I spend this? What's, what's the take that I can feasibly get away with this or get yep. the least amount of punishment possible? You know, what's also sad is while I was looking up like what the park looks like and there's like a website where you can upload your panoramic photos and show 
like it wasn't just on this park. Like you can upload any panoramic photos of like scenic views and, and things. It's literally in the first paragraph about the murder and Janance Freeman. Why would why would that be a selling point? This is the scene of the famous Jesus. or infamous murder of two children by no Janance. Thanks. And the and the thing is why I what also pisses me off to to no end. It's always the murder of these children by Janance Freeman and her lover. Yeah. Or and their mother. She's not getting any of the blame. She's not getting any of the blame. She's She's not being named. She's perfect. Yeah. She was just being coerced and went along with it. Yeah. In the... When they're figuring out, like, what... Who the the children are Mm -hmm. and, like, what happened to them. They were definitely... Like, their genitals were... Mm Mm-hmm. That's See, just, for the last the last little maybe this could have happened, how would that make sense? Yeah, I don't know. Because just the fact of you, like, like them you being could thrown knocked over them. the ravine, yeah, that alone would not be enough to mutilate something. Yeah, yeah, no. Right. But also, what would you have done with a tire iron Ugh. that would have mutilated? You, that's That was my line of thinking. And I know that's very dark. Um, but I, I tend to think of like, how do they find evidence like that and link it? What would have happened to link that to the higher iron? I'm thinking like pelvic bones were crushed or something. I'm just thinking why, what was, why, well, and well, why? Yeah. yeah. If you're going to kill them, kill them. Why are we mutilating body parts? Right. And I, I don't yeah, know why that came into play. Like if the last story was the true story. All you had to do was hit the kid in the head. Like, as sad as that is, that's all you had to do. So why did we take it a step further? Right? And I'm not sure. And that's where I was like, this is like a variance of the truth. I don't understand how both of the kids would have been killed in similar ways if they were done at different times. You know what I mean? Because she's saying that it happened with the boy and that she left. And then the next day when she saw Gertrude, you know, she she had that bullshit story of they loved each other. So I I wanted them to be together. I. Why were they killed in the same manner? Like that makes it makes no sense. Yeah. If that's if you're trying to say that. So, uh, yeah, I just I have questions. I am confusion. I have questions. Always have questions with these it's just, there's no there's to me there's just never going to be a good enough reason why you would do that to a child and and kill them in that manner absolutely yeah. not yeah i i it, even in the 60s you you could surrender your children to like foster care or to the state if you were that just i can't be a mom anymore or i can't feed them or you were so it, mad that you not, couldn't have sex right you're just that mad that you can't get alone time there were resources even then you could find them. Well, and they knew about them because they yeah. said, yeah, they were discussing it. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't that be a viable option instead? Because you're high and drunk and yeah, don't have a mind. Don't do drugs, kid. I mean, to be fair, if they were so high and drunk, do they either one of them even know what happened? Probably not. Do they even know? Well, it depends how long they've been doing it. I mean, I, if it you're seemed doing, like a while. Yeah. If you're doing drugs, your brain kind of like reforms itself to yeah. try and like get better. And so you might have a little bit of memory, not that well, but like yeah. it tries really hard. Well, and I wonder if that's why it took her like 10 years to actually come out and say, because she wrote that open letter basically to the newspaper yeah. in 1974. It, it, it basically took her over 10 years at that point. Because maybe she was like thinking of bits and bits and pieces until they all came together and was like, this is what I'm sticking to. Right. But also your mind is a very tricky thing. It can make you think that you're remembering things that it's allowing you to remember that were never actually happened. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're on drugs. Especially if you have damaged your brain by drugs. Yes. Yeah. Very, very good point. 
Yeah. I, I, I just can't say that any of them, either one of them know what they actually did or didn't do at this point. And neither does the world. No, this is definitely one that's, it's solved in as much as the people paid for the crimes by doing jail time, but it's not solved. It's not resolved. Yeah. 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 Well, (laughs) well, I know that Gertrude went off and is gone. Right. She may be dead. Yeah. For all I know. I, I don't know. Damn. Yeah. And she, I mean, if I were her and I had the opportunity to change my name, I, you wouldn't catch me. No. Yeah. yeah. Hide for the rest of forever. Plus, yeah. she was 19 when all this happened. So she. No, Gertrude yeah, she was, was the older it, one. At least. Gertrude was the older one? Yeah, Janance was 19. That's why oh, I, I kind of okay. had a hard time with their relationship, too, was like Janance at 19 was the dominant one, but you were possibly in your 40s at, yeah. it, by some accounts. Like she was the one I couldn't figure out if one article said 25, like two articles said 25, three articles said 33 and one article said 40. I just could not. And I don't have a, a, a birth date for either one of them. Hmm. Okay. Right. But Janance, I probably with a little more digging, I probably could have found her date of birth with anything outside of in relation to Janance you can't find anything about Gertrude. Everything is, is linked to Janance. Mm-hmm. So th- there was no like outside information on just specifically Gertrude. It was all found searching through articles about both of them or information about Janance. So yeah, she, I, she was anywhere from her mid twenties to late thirties. All right. Yeah. Damn, she had her kids hell early. If she was twenty five, she had the she had kids at fifteen. I mean, that's not that that's, weird. That's though. not that weird for that no. time. Especially, I think uh, she was married. Her first husband was uh, like a Hispanic migrant worker, so it's it's very possible that she was Hispanic herself, maybe. And I I know there are some. I mean, even in the in the fucking south it was fine to marry at 12, 13, 14 years old. So I, there are certain cultures and area of the country where that's just 15 would have been fine. Yeah. They didn't expect you necessarily either to finish high school. Yeah. You know, especially before like the fifties. I, yeah, I would say, I would say about the 1950s after world war two, that kind of changed. But yeah, before that, you weren't it wasn't an ex, it wasn't just an expected thing that everybody especially women were going to yeah. finish high school depending upon where you lived and how you know like if you if you were in a rural area and the school wasn't that close they'd get you to maybe eighth grade and then that was it so i mean it's possible if she was 25 she had those kids young it's not outside of of reasonable thought Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) It's a lot. (laughs) Let us know your guys' thoughts. I'm curious to to know what everybody thinks about this one because it it really is thought-provoking about a lot of things, about a lot of different issues like mental health, um, you know, LGBTQ rights and the community and I, I don't know, other things child molestation there's just there's a lot of things going on here another theme of a mother's love i mean (laughs) yeah she wasn't very loving i would say i'm i'm i just pretty much feel that the first opportunity she could get she's like oh yeah kids can go yeah yeah but let us know your thoughts we we definitely want to engage with everybody on social media and, and more messages. Also, I want to put out there a little hint. This next episode is actually one that a listener suggested. So make sure you guys stay tuned for the next release on June 4th. Mm. Fancy. Yeah. If anyone um, has suggestions, we would love to hear them. So let us know. And thank you 
guys for assisting me today while your father had work. Of course. Yeah. You didn't have a choice. No. My presence. (laughs) I'm so in awe of your presence, Mara. Thank you. (laughs) Until next time, guys, be kind to one another, stay safe, and stay out of the goddamn woods. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. (laughs) We're out. (laughs) Bye. Bye.